Hi guys, welcome to lesson 10 for solving radical equations. Our objective for today is that I can solve equations containing radicals and that I can identify extraneous solutions. So our radical equation is an equation that has a variable in the radicand. So a variable underneath our radical symbol, like the square root of a. An extraneous solution is an apparent solution that does not satisfy the original equation. So we're going to have to substitute and check our work. Oh, everything we've been doing all year coming back. Okay, so essential understanding. You can solve some radical equations by squaring each side of the equation and then testing the solutions to see which ones actually work. So. First problem, problem number one, solving by isolating the radical. So before we do any squaring, we always want to get that radical all by itself on one side of the equal sign. So to do that, we're going to use opposite operations. We're going to add 5 to both sides. We've got the square root of x is equal to 3. And now we're going to square both sides of our equation. And we get that x is equal to 9. Okay, letter B, same thing, we're gonna op or isolate the, square, the radical, so we need to subtract 11 from both sides. So the square root of x is equal to 10. Square both sides of the equation, and x is going to be equal to 100. Letter C, we're going to isolate the radical, subtract 7 from both sides. So we've got the square root of x plus 1 equals 3. Square both sides of our equation. And we've got x plus 1 is equal to 9. Subtract 1 from both sides, and x equals 8. I want you guys to try letters D, E, and F on your own, and then we're going to go over them. So letter D, we're going to start by subtracting 4 from both sides of the equation. The square root of Y is equal to 5. Square both sides, and Y equals 25. Letter E, add 4 to both sides of the equation. The square root of Y is going to be equal to 2. Square both sides, y equals 4. Letter F, add 3 to both sides of our equation. So we have the square root of x minus 3 is equal to 12. Square both sides, x minus 3 is equal to 144. Add 3 to both sides, x is equal to 147. Okay. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, right? Now we're having fun. It always starts out that way. Problem number two, simplifying to combine like radicals. I didn't change the title of this one. This is applying these properties. That was the title of the last one. All right, so the time in seconds that it takes for a pendulum of a clock to complete a full swing is approximated by the equation t equals the 2 square root of l over 3.3, where l is the length of the pendulum in feet. How long is the pendulum if it each swing takes one second? So time is one second. So let's substitute that in to what we know. So 1 is equal to 2 times the square root of l over 3.3. Well, we need to isolate that radical before we can solve anything. We're trying to find the length, so we're going to divide both sides of our equation by 2, which gives us 1 half equals L square root of L over 3.3. 3. Square both sides. So 1 fourth is equal to L over 3.3. And when you multiply both sides of our equation by 3.3, you're going to get that the length is equal to eight, or 0.825 feet. Uh, 
and don't forget your units. Okay. Letter B, the time it takes in seconds for an object to fall h feet with no air resistance can be found by the equation t equals the square root of h over 4. From what height was an object dropped if it takes 2.5 seconds to reach the ground? So we substitute in our known quantity, which is 2.5 for time, is equal to the square root of h over 4. Multiply both sides of our equation by 4. And we've got 10 square, or 10 is equal to the square root of h. And square both sides. And the height is 100 feet. Again, make sure you write down your units. Letter C, the velocity of a projectile is determined by the function v equals the square root of s over 0.03 where s is the horizontal distance the projectile traveled. If the velocity of the projectile is measured at 150 meters per second, what is the distance the projectile travels? So we substitute in 150 for velocity, and that's s over 0.03. Okay. Square both sides of our equation, and we get 2,200, or sorry, 22,500 is equal to s over 0 0.03. Multiply both sides of our equation by 0 0.03. And we find that s is equal to 675 meters. There we go. Should we let them use a calculator on this? Just kidding. <laughs> All right. Problem three: solving with radical or solving radical expressions on both sides. Bum bum bum. Yay! So, first thing we need to do: both sides have radicals that are isolated for this one. So we are going to just square both sides of our equation. So we get seven x minus four is equal to 5x plus 10. The square root and the square cancel one another out. And now we just got to do equations like we did in chapter 2. Equations of variables on both sides. You subtract 5x from both sides. I forgot how to do the simple stuff. 2x minus 4 equals 10. Add 4 to both sides. 2x equals 14. Divide by 2. x equals 7. Letter B, same deal. We're going to square both sides of our equation. And we get 3m minus 6 is equal to m plus 23. Subtract m from both sides, and you get 2m minus 6 equals 23. Add 6 to both sides. 2m equals 29. That's what I meant. And divide by 2. M is going to be equal to 14.5. That is something that you could write as a decimal just because it's a simple terminating decimal. All right, let us see. Hmm, what could we do here? We've got that 2 out in front. Well, we're going to square both sides of the equation, so that means we need to square everything on both sides of the equations. So we've got R plus 5 is equal to 4 times r minus 1. Distribute that 4, you get 4r minus 4. Subtract r from both sides. 5 is equal to 3r. Subtract 4 from both, or add 4 from both sides, sorry. 9 is equal to 3r. Divide by 3. And r is equal to 3. Okay. Letter D. Square root of 3x plus 3 squared equals the square root of x plus 7 squared. Drop the radicals. Subtract x from both sides. 2x plus 3 equals 7. Subtract 3 from both sides. 
2x equals 4, so x equals 2. Okay, now comes a place where people like to have, or people tend to have troubles. Identifying extraneous solutions. So these are solutions that don't actually work for our original problem. So we're going to start by squaring both sides of letter A. So negative y squared and y plus, square root of y plus 6 squared. So you get y squared equals y plus 6. Subtract y and 6 from both sides because we need to get this equal to um, 0 to solve a quadratic. I subtracted y and 6 in the same line, if that's what you're looking at. Why? Because, uh, no, it's y squared minus y is y squared minus y minus 6 equals 0. Can we do y squared minus y? No, I guess we can't. Because <laughs> that's a squared and that's not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you subtracted and made it. I set it equal to 0. So y squared minus y minus 6 equals 0. So subtract the y, subtract the 6. Yep. All right. Oh, we've seen this. Yep. And that's factoring, and that's easily <sighs> factorable y minus 3 and y plus 2. So y is equal to 3 and y is equal to negative 2. Now remember I said we need to check these answers and see if they work. So the opposite of 3 is negative 3 equals the square root of 3 plus 6 is 3 or 9 square root of 9 is 3 does negative 3 equal 3 not on planet earth anyway nope. so that is not so 3 is not one of our solutions that would be that would be extraneous Negative 2, so negative, the opposite of negative 2 is positive 2, equals negative, square root of negative 2 plus 6, which is 4. four. So 2 is equal to square root of 2, or 4, which is 2. So y equals negative 2 is our actual solution, 3 is our extraneous. All right, letter b. Square both sides of our equation and we get x squared is equal to negative x plus 6. So we write that as a quadratic, so we're going to add 6, or sorry, add x and subtract 6. So that gives us x plus 3 and x minus 2. So x equals negative 3 and x equals 2. So now we need to check our work on those two and see which, one's, which one is extraneous and which one works. So negative 3 squared is positive 9. Sorry, no. The squared was our work to solve it. So negative 3 is equal to the opposite of negative 3, which is positive 3, plus 6. Square root of 9 is 3. Does negative 3 equal 3? No. Try 2. So 2 equals the square root of negative 2 plus 6. Which is 4. Which is 4. So 2 equals 2. So that works. Okay. Letter C. We need to square both sides of our equation. 2y or 2 minus y equals y squared. Add y and subtract 2 to both sides of our equation. It's y squared 
plus y minus 2 equals 0. So that's going to be y plus 2 and y minus 1. So our two solutions are y equals negative 2 and y equals positive 1. So we substitute those in and check our work. Square root of 2 minus negative 2 would be the square root of 4. So is negative 2 equal to square root of 4? No. one is equal to two minus one, square root of two minus one. One is equal to the square root of one, yes. Okay. Letter D, square both sides of our equation. Mr. Bowen, this is too much work. Suck it up x plus 2 is equal to x squared minus 8x plus 16. Subtract x and subtract 2 from both sides and you get x squared minus 9x plus 14. So that's x minus 7, x minus 2. So our two solutions are x equals 7 and x equals 2. Check our work. Square root of 7 plus 2 is 9. Square root of 9 is 3. And three, 7 minus 4 is 3. Okay. Square root of 2 plus 2 is 4. Square root of 4, which is 2. And that is equal to negative 2? No. Okay. Last two problems, identifying equations with no solutions. Do you want me to write? No, we want to be able to read it. Hey. All right. Letter A, we're going to square both, or sorry, we are going to uh, subtract 6 from both sides first. We need to isolate that radical, and we can. So we get negative square root of 2x is equal to 4. and then we divide by negative 1 so you have the square root of 2x equals negative 4 can we have the square root of something equal and negative? Nope. Oh, this is why it's no solution <laughs> So uh, if when you isolate your radical, you're equal to a negative, it would be no solution uh, because we are not dealing with imaginary numbers. Get. That is your algebra two teacher's job to teach you. Right, algebra two, not geometry. Algebra two. Yeah. So letter B, subtract seven from both sides. You got the square root of four X is equal to negative seven no, or negative four, sorry, no solution. Now, letter C kind of looks like there might be a solution, so we're gonna square both sides of our equation. We're gonna see what happens here. We get three x plus three is equal to x plus seven. Subtract x from both sides. Two x plus three equals seven. Ding. Subtract 3 from both sides, 2x equals 4, so x is equal to 2. Now let's substitute that in and let's check it. Looks like a solution to me, Mr. Bolin. That would be a 9. That would be square root of 9, mm -hmm. which is 3. And that would be square root of 9, which is 3. Did I not change that problem right? Because it was supposed to be no solution. It looks like a solution to me because it checks. Oh, because I didn't write the problem right. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Uh, it was supposed to be x minus 7. It was supposed to be x minus 7. Yeah. If it were x minus 7, then you'd have no solution. I was waiting for that to be a negative 4 right there. Yeah. It was supposed to be x minus 7. Well, Mr. Boland dropped a negative. Happens to the best of us. Yep, I know. And I am the best of us. That's right. All right. Rate your level of understanding. Write down any questions you may have, particularly over, I'm going to guess, finding uh, the extraneous solutions. That's probably going to be where it trips you guys up. Uh, write down your summary, and we will go over things in class tomorrow.